when you get to spa in the morning and you park up the hill here in lot 14 you're walking into the circuit and you're like man this is great everything's downhill it's like downhill into the circuit yeah and then the end of the day comes and it's not downhill anymore Good morning and welcome to Spa again. We're back at Spa. This is the third event that I've shot here this year. Just did two days of testing, had a day off yesterday, but now we're here to shoot International GT Open, which I'm really looking forward to. It's a new series for me with GT3 cars. There's a lot of cars in the field. It's a different format with a shorter race, but still driver changes and stuff. So I'm looking forward to checking it out and seeing how it goes. So let's grab our gear, and head into the media center gonna have the same spot that I had for the test because you know I mess with a good thing so here in the media center now Tabard acquired um, I'm number 39 this week and if you know the shooting doesn't work out I always just throw this on and go and fill potholes so I did decide to come to the media center a little bit early today um, our first session is not till 12 45 it's 9 30 now so I have like two and a half hours before I really need to like be down in the pit lane and ready to go um, but I always have stuff that I can work on. I wanted just to get in, get set up, get a little bit of work done, get some prep work done. I'm really looking forward to this weekend because GT Open has a pretty chill schedule. Like I said, first session at 12.45 today. Tomorrow for qualifying, we're done at two. And I only have one big client in this race, so I can really just focus on making amazing content for them and not be spread too thin by having so many clients, which is something I have experienced in the past because it can be hard to say no to people, but then you end up having too many clients and your work can suffer. And I just don't want that to happen anymore in the future. So looking forward to just sticking to one main client and putting a bunch of great content together for them. I think it's going to be a really fun weekend. All right, so getting set up and ready to rock. I just went and had lunch and now we're going to go shoot the first session. It's so weird having your first session this late in the day at 1245. But I just noticed that my GoPro Max has a big um, crack in the lens. And that's why they give you those lens protectors, folks. So don't forget those at home like I did the other day and then ended up cracking your screen. So uh, there is a way to replace the lens, but it's very... Um, time consuming so I'll probably just end up having to get a new one or maybe I can talk to GoPro and see what they can do for me but I'm pretty sure that this is out of warranty and they do give you those covers which you're supposed to use and not be an idiot like me but let's go down to the pit lane and do some shooting Cool. Just not like you're chatting before the, like like the session, yeah. Hi Charlie, I really like the voice screen. <laughs> you like it? I really like the voice screen. Put it in first gear, put it on the front. All right, so we finished session one. Uh, as per usual here at Spa, uh, there were quite a few red flags, so it was very short. I stayed in the pit lane the whole time. There was no time to go trackside. They maybe got six or seven laps in. Not a lot you can do in a one hour practice with that many red flags. So I'm gonna go edit for a little bit. I just had lunch with the guys, and uh, then we're gonna head uh, trackside for the second session. It should be good. I'm going to do trackside for the whole thing. So I'm going to leave about a half hour beforehand, start walking down to Eau Rouge. Hopefully I'll walk to the end of the Kemmel Strait, have enough time to get out there, get a few shots at five, six, and seven. And uh, hopefully we'll have enough content to make a little video today. The testing for two days on Tuesday, Wednesday for the 24, we had 21 red flags in two days. Yeah, I was that 16 hours, we had 21 red flags. Hey, merci. Oui, merci. Uh, maybe I go there. It's something different. Hello. So got out here and of course uh, after one lap we are full course yellow in this practice It's only an hour session. We're 10 minutes in so only have 50 minutes left And I need to get enough stuff to make a nice little edit today and that 
might be tough the way things are going, but I was hoping to sit back there and get a cool guardrail shot, but I just don't have time to wait around. So I got to move to the next spot. We're not getting a cool guardrail shot, but it is what it is. So I'm set up here right above these tires and I'm shooting a vertical frame, as you can see. And I want to try and use the top of these tires to create a nice blur effect in the bottom of the image and kind of frame block, as we call it, some of the image. So hopefully we can get that. So I don't have a scooter and I'm trying to walk down to Rouge in time. But I think I have enough time to get there and get a few shots, but I just stopped here on the Kemmel Strait to get a nice high-speed panning shot. So I did make it here in time, uh, but now there's a red flag. So we're just gonna be sitting around now waiting. There's only five minutes left though, so I doubt the session will resume. And even if it does, you have to just hope that you know your cars are gonna run. So that might be all she wrote. I might only have 30 or 40 seconds of on-track footage from today, but it is what it is. Just like I thought, uh, the red flag ended the session. They didn't resume it. So that's gonna be uh, all my shots for today, unfortunately. But I think I have enough stuff and I'm a pretty, you know, crafty editor. So I should be able to make something decent for today. And then it'll be back to the hotel. Man, pretty early. Honestly, this I could get used to this GT Open with being done by like 6, 6.30 every day. I'm down. All wrapped up here now, just two practices today, so it was pretty easy. It wasn't super exciting, so my apologies for that. But uh, we'll go get some dinner now, get to bed at a reasonable hour, and be back first thing in the morning for day two. All right, so it's day two of GT Open. It's just five minutes to nine in the morning, heading in to the media center to get some work done, get prepped for the day. Our first session today is at 11.40, and all we have today is two qualifying sessions, and we're done at 2 o'clock. It's very short. I'm going to spend the first qualifying session in the pit lane, and the second one I'm just going to go to Eau Rouge and get a few shots because I wasn't able to get any yesterday. And that's the plan. Should be a pretty easy day. Not sure why I'm wearing my sunglasses in the tunnel, but I don't really have a free hand to take them off, so, so I'm too busy making content. So when we talk about North American versus European motorsport, I will say the transporter trucks here in Europe are a million times cooler than the ones we have in North America. Like, look at these things. It's got panels that open all throughout the side. It's got an office inside. It's expandable. And from what I hear, they're like half the price. So yeah, way cooler trucks in Europe. So a lot of media centers will actually have um, these lockers that we can rent out. Here you give a deposit and just unlock it. Always keep your locker key on your credential so you don't lose it. That was more difficult than it needed to be. And then I can uh, keep my stuff in here overnight so I don't have to take it home with me every time. And then at some tracks, some more dodgy tracks like Monza, Barcelona, you actually take your laptop and everything and lock it up every time you leave the media center. You don't leave anything out because a lot of stuff has been known to be stolen at those places. But usually it's just so I can leave my stuff here overnight. And I feel pretty comfortable leaving it here locked up. So one of the big things about this weekend you'll notice is that uh, we're shooting everything vertical. So this is the first event I've ever worked where I've shot everything vertical because my client here has requested that all videos be vertical. Just fine, that's the format that we're delivering in now. But usually I'll still shoot 16 by nine and then crop, but he's requested all vertical, so I figured I might as well just shoot all vertical. just to the final chicane here for qualifying and there's a red flag after two laps so lots of red flags in this championship i love this pit entry though so i'm kind of at odds with what i'm going to produce from today although i guess i know like the kind of reel that 
we're gonna make today, but this weekend I've really been struggling because the sessions are so short and there's been so many red flags that we just don't have a lot of content. Um, the video I made yesterday, I was pretty happy with it. The client said they weren't really a huge fan of the music, so we want to use something else for our long edit after the race tomorrow. He actually wants to use a uh, copywritten track, so he's just going to send that to me and I'll just edit to whatever he sends me. But yeah, it's been a little bit, um, I don't know, it's just been a little bit frustrating. I don't know, almost feeling kind of down on myself and my abilities because I just haven't been able to get the kind of stuff I want. And all the plans I make with my shot list and, and the storyboarding I've done, I haven't been able to achieve any of it because we just don't have enough track time. I hate making excuses, but it has just been difficult difficult. Um, also, yeah, just out of my element in this championship with these one hour sessions and and really short, lots of red flags. Like I shoot one hour sessions in IMSA and those are fine, but we might get one red flag in an hour practice. And here we have maybe in an hour practice, 35 minutes of actual green flag. So it's a bit tough, but you know what? Just gotta persevere and get through it and make great content. You know, just, just make it, tomorrow will be better back in the media center after qualifying. Just two short qualifying sessions today. Um, I think I got everything I need though. I'm feeling, I, I was feeling a little bit down on myself before. I'm starting to feel a little bit better now. I think I'm getting everything I need to get, but it's been, it's just been a, it's been out of my, out of my zone this weekend. Just not really feeling it. It's been tough. It happens, right? We all have bad days. So we'll get through it though. We'll make some content. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I have a nice video planned uh, once Sam decides what music he wants. We'll get that going and uh, get prepped for that. But now it's editing time. And then I think Charlie and I are gonna go for another run on the circuit. So we'll have a good relaxing rest of the day, hopefully. All right, so we're all wrapped up now. Uh, Charlie and I were hoping to unwind by going for a run on the circuit, but they're still racing until six. And we're done way earlier than that. So uh, he's just watching F1 qualifying. And then we're gonna go for a run in town and then hopefully go for dinner and try to get to bed nice and early. So it's the final day of GT Open at Spa and I'm feeling pretty lazy because it's 8.30 and I'm still in my hotel room. Normally, if I was at an IMSA race, we'd just be finishing shooting a warm-up session right now, but there is no warm-up for GT Open. It is just a race at like, I think it's at one o'clock today or something. So pretty chill. I'm gonna go down uh, to the lobby, get breakfast here at the hotel and then head to the racetrack and we'll get this day started. Get in nice and early, get some extra work done and plan out today's video. Just got sent the music that the client wants to use. So I'll start thinking about how I'm gonna use that for this edit today and we'll get started. Headed down the death stairs again. I get like PTSD every time I go down these things. Like when it rains, these things are so slippery. It's not safe. We're just gonna head into the garage now and get a few shots for today's video. So not a lot going on down in the garage. Just uh, gonna sneak some editing in while this TCR race is going on and then the pit lane will open and we'll get started uh, with the GT Open race. It's a two hour and 20 minute race, plus one lap. Can't forget about the one lap. But they're only allowed to do very short stints. Nobody can double stint. So they're doing like 30 minute stints and then changing drivers. So it's gonna be interesting. So I don't think I'll be able to go very far from the pit lane. I likely have to just stay along the front stretch and then maybe for like the back half of the race I can sneak out to Eau Rouge and get the shot I want to get. But uh, it's going to be interesting. Definitely a different format than anything I've ever experienced before. Do this with the glove for me. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Amazing. That may have been the weakest fist bump of all time. I I'm not very proud of myself. So this is always the craziest part of the day at these European races is when the pit lane opens and cars start driving to the grid. It's very different than what we do in North America where the cars will just be sitting out there and fans can come see them. They actually open the pit lane, cars put tires on, they head out. It's really cool actually because it's so hectic and it's just this craziest where this guy's trying to stop people from walking across, then cars are coming. It's insane. A lot of times think like there's got to be a better way because like you're trying to get a shot of the Ferrari pulling out that another car is coming people are walking across like it's just it's crazy it's wild it's 
now I'm trying to make it to turn one before the race starts in five minutes, but I don't think it's gonna start in five minutes. I think it's gonna be delayed. The cars are still driving to the grid and they have to do a full formation lap at I think 60 kilometers an hour. So I'm huffing and puffing because that hill is huge. I swear like no amount of training will prepare you for walking around at Spa, it's brutal. <laughs> but we'll get to turn one in time, we'll shoot the start from there. And as much as you might wanna try something different, sometimes the best shot to get is just the standard start shot from turn one. And I'm not gonna try and do anything crazy today, I'm just gonna shoot the start from down there. It's predictable, but there's likely to be some contact and some carnage on lap one into turn one, so hopefully we can capture some of that. All right, we made it in time, so coming around on the formation lap. We'll be going green here in a second. It's time for a two hour and 20 minute race. Plus one lap. Can't forget about the one lap. was a little bit of carnage in turn one, a few cars in the gravel. We all lost the bet we had over how many cars would go through the gravel. And I'm just working my way down the old front stretch where the uh, old pit lane or the endurance pit lane is to go down to the bottom of Eau Rouge and get some shots. Uh, I don't need to get the first pit stop because Charlie's getting in, but I need to get Sam getting in when he goes back in after. So we'll go down for a few minutes and shoot. It's gonna pop back up here. It's a little muddy down there. And then when I get the shot to need, I'll go back up to the pit lane. I get the second round of stops. I'm gonna try and shoot the reflection in the windows back there and see if I can get something cool. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, we'll try it. Just over an hour in now, I shot from the endurance pit lane. The first pit cycle happened, so all the cars are like out of whack. I have no clue uh, what's happening, which is kind of a good time to mention that a lot of the time during these races, we don't really have any idea what's happening in the race, unless we have a radio or something, which I don't have. So they're all coming through in a weird lineup. I have no idea what position uh, the car I need to shoot is in, which you just shoot it when it comes fast and uh, figure it out later. So. Usually that's why I'll head back to the pit lane about 30 minutes before the end of the race, just to see where we're at. And if it looks like we're gonna be in a good spot for a podium to make sure you get those celebration shots. So I'm down to the pit lane now, hence the helmet. We're under a safety car right now. Sorry, full course yellow and safety car are different things in this series. And most of the North American series I shoot, a full course yellow means safety car. But here they're different things. So we're under a safety car right now. And I don't know what it's for. Uh, it's not here where I am. But our car is still running, so it's all good. It's waiting for when we go green again. Grab a few shots here at the source. And I think that's pretty much all I have time to do before the final pit stop. And just like that, we're under another safety car. So I managed to get a couple of shots here. I'll stay for a few more laps. And then the race is honestly almost over. There's only... I think 40 minutes left, so I'll just head back down to the pit lane and see what's up. And then basically, hopefully a podium and then post-race editing, so.
That's a weekend shooting GT Open. Definitely a unique championship. I think I've said that a bunch of times. Definitely one of the, the stranger sort of GT3 championships I've ever done. Interesting uh, driving standards, lots of safety cars, and lots of red flags in practice. But I managed to make some solid content that I'm happy with. Clients are happy. That's what matters the most. Was feeling a little down on myself the first couple days, but kind of got it back today and just got in a rhythm, got a plan, and felt really good. So thanks so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, uh, as always, thank you so much. And if you want to like, share, subscribe, all of that, it goes a long way. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions about being a motorsport videographer, anything you'd like to see me do in the future or topics that I should cover. Just let me know and I'll try and make some videos and show you guys more of my world working as a professional motorsport videographer. Thanks again, folks. See you next time.